Roy. Okay. Are there any questions? Ron, Ron uh, will text Sheldon and ask him to let us know when he gets on, okay? So are there any questions about anything else? Hey, Rip, this is Charles. I have a question. If they take away all their assault rifles, no one can have them. I guess the police will have them. Now, what's, I mean, what's going to stop them to steal chemical? You can take a handgun. Some have 18 in the chamber, and you got some that's got 32. You can kick up in a regular handgun, and it'll shoot you like a assault gun as long as you keep pulling the trigger. Um, it's not just assault uh, rifles. It's assault rifles and clips that holds more than 10 rounds. So that's, that's the proposal. And when that happened, um, you saw very you saw very few uh, shootings mass shootings when that happened. So that's the purpose of, of the um, the um, desire for a ban on assault rifles. First of all, um, there is um, no reason to have a assault rifle other than to kill people. That's the bottom line. You can't hunt with a, an assault rifle because of the distance that that round would travel and how effective it is as it travels. So, And um, I do believe that if um, they would, if they showed the carnage that that weapon can do, it would make a huge difference in the minds of people because what they hear is somebody got shot and they attribute that to what they see on TV as opposed to Understanding that if a child got shot, as that kid said, in the nose, then the opposite side of his head is completely gone. An assault rifle, uh, pretty much, if you hit someone, a kid, in the abdomen, it pretty much uh, cuts him in half. The destruction of those Mm -hmm. rounds is astronomical, and people don't see that. They just hear about it, and they think of a regular round. Uh, there, there's no comparison at all, none. Master. Oh. No. Yes, sir. No, I was just going to thank you for saying that. I've been thinking that for two or three days. This is Richard. And uh-huh. it's, a, it's a horrible thing to think, but I, I just keep thinking of Emmett Till and his mother and what she yeah. did. And I think that's the truth. Uh, if, if, if I was anywhere involved in that and they wouldn't let me in, I, I want to see the reality of what happened to my child. I have to live with it either way, but right. we need somebody to sneak in there with a camera. I don't know what, and it's probably going to take sending it overseas to, to publish it. The American papers wouldn't, but I agree with you completely. Uh, people have this cleaned up version of the whole thing. It's too neat and tidy. It is ugly. Uh, anyway, in fact, after a couple hours, even the smells are bad. It's just really a horrible thing to think, but if, if that's what it takes to put in people's minds, to let to, to give them the trauma they need to, to feel, then I, I think we've we're reached that point, if not even before. But I agree with you, thank you for saying that. You took the burden off of me thinking it anyway and not knowing if it'd be appropriate to, to mention. Thank you, but yeah, I do feel that. and. With that many kids in that room having been shot with that type of a weapon, um, and they outside for an hour when they stepped into that room, the smell of death was strong in the air, it was thick in the air, and it's a smell that they will never forget. Uh, it's, it's so different than what um, than what you see on TV and what pe- the way people present it. I don't even think um, the reporters have ever witness and an eyewitness to the um, aftermath of that kind of carnage. Well, I I do think it's it's the policy of the police to just do what they can to prohibit any of that. And and I just, uh, I think it's wrong. It's an ugly thing to propose, but it just, it is anything but a neat and clean situation. And people have to understand that. They just have to. We brought ourselves to that point. And little children like that, 
my lord. But anyway, okay, thanks. It's off my chest. Pastor, this is Teresa. How how do how do we kind of because I mean my heart is still heavy from seeing that. But what what else can we do other than breathe and just just pray for peace, love, and kindness? That, well, there's nothing better you can do other, other than that. And the reason I say that is because um, in order for things to be brought to a head, things like this happen. If um, if there were not this type of carnage, then people would forget about everything else that has taken place and all the things that have taken place behind the scenes. The idea of amassing um, assault weapons, they are not primarily for uh, mass shootings like in schools. The reason white supremacists are amassing those weapons is for um, the purpose of a race war. The thing that took place, place in Buffalo, that's why they are doing it. And they make no bones about it. And I'm just trying to remember, I think it was Texas, where the Democrats proposed that um, white supremacy be, um, be refrained legally from owning uh, weapons such as that. And they were not even into the um, bill on the floor. So, Reason, um, what we are doing now. Uh, is dealing with those things. Now, keep in mind, there, when we look at it uh, through our eyes, um, of course, it's reprehensible, it's heartbreaking, it's heart-wrenching. It's something that you never forget. And it does not bring empathy in, uh, to your heart. Something is wrong with you. On the other hand, when we look at it through the eye, he is opportunities to um, to end this. And uh, as hard as it is, these kids who were killed and along with their teachers, um, I do believe that this is the breaking point. Uh, and I hear what everyone is saying. It's different this time where you said that the last time, but there's a different type of difference this time. I do not think that people are going to let it go as they've done in the past. And it is my deep desire that someone, be it an undertaker or a, a forensic scientist or a scene investigator, I don't care. If someone would leak photos, not necessarily showing the kid's identity, but photos of the carnage. I'm hoping that that will happen, and that really would make a difference. The other part of it is there has never been a time when um, – right wing musicians and when um, a Republicans pulled out of anything with the NRA no matter what happened. They didn't do that after that no. But for them to do that now uh, in, in light of um, what transpired the other day it that speaks volumes as to where we are in terms of um, our, um, our empathetic concerns when it comes to assault rifles. If it had been adults, the, the response would be different. If it had been us as Africans, talking about uh, six, seven, eight-year-old kids, and that in itself makes everything different. A kid stands in a classroom and says, uh, and start counting how many are alive, and then, um, I'm sorry, counting how many are dead when there's only a handful, and a few minutes later, how many are alive and most of my friends are dead, that makes a difference. That's a huge difference than what we have experienced in the past. And on top of that, to talk about a good guy with a gun versus a bad guy with a gun, when 19 good guys standing on the outside are, are scared to death of, um, uh, of going in there to save those kids' lives, that also makes a difference. So we are, we are, I do believe that we are truly at a turning point. As a matter of fact, um, I, uh, I was talking with Ron Rest, and I said to Ron that uh, we are witnessing uh, the demise of an uh, imperialistic empire and the uh, establishment of a nation. 
there has never been a nation established in this in this uh, on this soil. It has always been uh, an empire of imperialism, a colonialism. Now it is more imperialism. British Britain was the colonial state, and America has always been the imperialistic. Um, and and now we're beginning to see the demise of that. And that with all that comes with it, it's not pretty. However, um, it takes the ugliness in order to uh, bring us to a state where we can see beauty again, if ever we've seen it in this nation. I hope that helps you, Teresa, and the rest of you, of course. Yes, Pastor, thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, I don't know how many people saw uh, CBS this morning, but they were talking about a segment of this that rarely gets shown. I did not know that the makers of the video game Call to Duty had actually uh, under got a, a contract with the, the makers of uh, uh, that, that assault rifle, the AR-15, to use it for their video game. So that's the weapon that, you know, most of these kids are using. And they're just showing that there is a correlation to this video game. Not only that, but using the video game, the the controllers that you use actually is made to kind of uh, mirror the feel of actually holding a weapon and shooting it. So it actually vibrates when you shoot it and at, at the screen. So you will have the real effect of what it will feel like to shoot uh, when, when you actually shoot the weapon. So that to me is, is something too that uh, that that's a part of this that uh, you know the, the mental part of this that that needs to be addressed and not just uh, just just the selling of the rifles themselves. It's even worse than that, Ron. The military uses video games to desensitize you to killing, teach you to kill. So the whole idea of using um, that type of software, uh, it should be restricted anyway uh, to uh, military use only. But um, it's not. Just like there, there are, what do you call those things that uh, that are used to teach pilots how to fly? Those um, Simulators. Simulators. Yes, yeah. Uh, uh, those are used also uh, in teaching people to shoot. And that's all a video game is. Simulator. Yeah, and it, uh... Okay, you on. Go ahead, show. Oh, yeah, I was just about to say, and it's the desynthesized, I messed up that word, y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, uh, more importantly, um, the people who are engaged in that activity, so in a sense, it's to take the real um, consequences and toes out of their action to the point where they become immune to it. And it's almost like making them unhuman uh, to the point where they don't have feelings and then they don't really process and understand you know, what they're doing, especially in terms of, um, of drones. Um, the operators of drones who uh, is well, well known um, within the military forces who uh, deal with a lot of uh, trauma and essentially just giving orders to, you know, uh, basically take out certain uh, targets or whatever. But again, these are these are human uh, human beings. Um, as you were talking about uh, this, everything coming to uh, a head, and I guess just to just to quickly uh, explain that um, for those who may be a little bit confused about it. So, and this takes uh, a little bit of a bigger picture. So a state or a government is the entity that has successfully uh, been able to claim a monopoly on power, meaning that they control uh, power in the way that they choose and wish, and there's no one that can stop it. Now it is two ways for a, when I say state, I'm talking about a government, there's two ways for a state to actually do that. They can do that by forcing the people to abide, or they can coerce the people uh, to abide. Um, in this uh, country, the government or the state has been able to 
coerce, even if it was like extremely manipulative, but coerce uh, the people to uh, go along with literally everything, essentially the same as um, uh, this police state in the name of uh, protection. Uh, police actually don't have a duty to serve and protect uh, any individual. They are simply trying to keep uh, order as it relates to uh, basically supporting the Constitution so the Constitution can stay in place. Not even that the uh, Constitution operates as it says, but that the Constitution is that uh, thing that has uh, the power. So with all that being uh, said, there's a great deal of this uh, country who has gone along with this all along because they look at the police as being that entity that is there to protect them and serve them and is in their best interest to have it. With what, uh, what's big about what just occurred is that, um, that uh, NIP has been uh, dismantled and all of that is coming to light that that thing that was thought of was never really there uh, to begin with. I'm finished. Any questions about statements about what Shelvin said or any other remarks in regards to this? Let me reiterate something that we've said before. There will, there will, um, there will never be a nation established for the benefit of the people. <clears throat> excuse me, until uh, the uh, the southern uh, aristocracy has been dismantled. The uh, southern aristocracy has always been in charge of this government, and it still is. It is that racist southern mentality that controls this country. It did from the beginning, and it still does. And that is, a part of that is stockpiling weapons of, for the purpose of a race war, picking up where they left off uh, during the Civil War. That's the objective. The other part of that is um, when you take that and couple it with what's happening with the um, Christian church, the Southern Baptist Evangelical Church, however you want to call it, when you look at that, when you couple those two things, what you see is a white nationalist Christian party that exists in this country under the guise of a Republican Party. That's what's happening in this nation. Even right this weekend, um, the um, this Memorial Day celebration day, this did not come into effect because of World War II or World War One. It came into effect in 1867. It was called uh, the uh, Decoration Day when uh, the um, Confederate wives uh, direct, uh, decorated the graves of the Confederate soldiers uh, during the month of May. And they chose May because in the spring, that's when the flowers were blooming, especially in the southeast. And it grew into um, a day of decoration, uh, and it was moved to um, on a national level. Thank you. In 1982, I believe it was, is when it became known as Memorial Day. So every 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 day that um, we actually call ourselves celebrated is a day that grew out of racism, out of the racist hearts of all those who control this country, uh, and um, those who the, the, the Biden abolitionist type of people have never had anything to do with in, in terms of change but other than making noise because every single time that they thought they had uh, accomplished something um, they were actually outsmarted and Mitch McConnell is no different than it was Andrew Jackson or uh, Andrew Johnson uh, under Lincoln it was no different and so what I'm saying in essence is this it, you can go through all the days you want a holiday, they're going to come from erroneous Christian, Christian statements in regards to the scriptures, or you're going to find that they have their origin deep-seated uh, in, in um, Southern politics uh, more, more directly 
the Confederacy of the South. So, so when we talk about the weaponry, the first time that there was ever a uh, idea of controlling weapons, it was to keep weapons out of the hands of um, the uh, people who were uh, enslaved. And during the um, uh, the reason the National Rifle Association gained so much traction was after uh, Hewitt Newton and the Panthers showed up at the state capitol with weapons. Um, you could carry a shotgun, that's what they had, shotguns as opposed to um, rifles. And after that, the, the uh, National Rifle Association began to recruit very strongly, especially in the South. So this whole thing, you can take Nixon's Southern strategy, um, the uh, evangelical church, uh, slavery, and the mentality of racism, all of those things are intertwined together. And when you look at them together or individually, the results that you get is a sick nation who's hell-bent on creating chaos. Now, answer this question. Why is it that you would support someone who walks into a classroom and kills kids? You say, well, nobody's supporting him. Yes, they are. If you support the weapon that, of his choice, knowing that those are the weapons that are used, you are supporting him as well. And, all, and then Greg Abbott says that um, there, he has no history of mental illness, and about three minutes later he was saying that only a, a mentally ill person would do this. You, then you say that mental illness should be addressed, but you take $411 million in April out of um, mental health in your state. So all of these contradictory statements are being made, all these contradictory actions are being seen, yet no one seems to pick up on them and, and draw common thread through them. And the reason being, in my opinion anyway, is because the attitude of Caucasian males in this country is the same as the attitude of all the rest of them, that one does it quietly and the other one does it overtly. The only reason that, they're, that, that uh, the people like Mitch and, and, uh, and, and I'll say Biden as well are upset with Donald Trump is because Donald Trump did everything publicly that they've been doing privately. That's it. And any questions or comments about that? And, I, and I, I know that this was not supposed to be the direction we take, but this is the direction we needed to take because this is something that is very pertinent uh, to our lives in this nation. And I do not, for, I do not want any of you uh, to feel threatened by what's going on in this society. I don't. And the reason I say that is because uh, even though there are dangers all around us, there are those who are of the um, Harriet Tubman type energy, regardless of what happens, is always protected. And the reason being is because it's for the benefit of humanity. Um, Harriet Tubman should have been killed or captured a thousand times, but never was, because there was this voice that spoke to her consistently and constantly about how to uh, evade her captors or, or, or her killers. And as a result of that, she was able to do great things in terms of not just uh, bringing people from, from slavery, uh, out of slavery, but also being um, a spy during the Civil War, also uh, being one of the major people to establish health education welfare along with Frederick Douglass and the Freedmen's Hospital at Howard University. So people are people who are... are, are, are on, on the um, in the vanguard uh, for the benefit of humanity, uh, there are different types of protections that are afforded them. However, there are times when their their martyrdom serves a better a greater cause than their walking this earth does. However, it it shakes out. Uh, I am prepared for it. Have always been in terms of the death that that's part of the living. So I don't want you. Uh, to live a life of fear, because if you live a life of fear, you are fe- you are fueling uh, the power of racism, of white nationalism, not just in this nation, 
but worldwide. Thank you. Questions, comments? I have one more question, Pastor. This is Charles again. When they made that constitution, was that constitution including us too, or was just them making it among themselves? Thank you for asking that question. Um, I, 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 I kind of cringe every time I hear um, people of, that look like me talking about our forefathers and our constitution. It was not our forefathers. It is not our constitution. Uh, and you you had to be, uh, in order for you to be a citizen of this country, and it's uh, written there in this Constitution, citizen involves someone uh, who was white and of good character in order for you to be a citizen of this nation. There were zero people who looked like me that were considered of good character, number one. Number two, that you they definitely weren't white. So, no, the Constitution was originally written uh, only for white people, period and white males in particular. So there has never been a time when this Constitution has been inclusive of anyone. Even at the end of slavery, when the uh, when the Constitution was amended, uh, supposedly ending slavery, it had a caveat in it. It says, except if you commit a crime. So you can be framed for a crime and be put back in slavery. And you say, I'm not going back to slavery, then if that's the case, then why is the prison full of uh, African males. Uh, why, why are there more African males in prison in this country uh, than any other group of people uh, in this country? And why is it that America has more incarcerated people than any country on the face of this earth? Um, I, I must agree with something that Ron said, and that is um, a, a belief that the Creator brought this country uh, into existence for global redemption. The, the most um, devious, deadly, deceptive, and evilness that's on the earth emanates or exists in this country. Um, we talk about other countries. We, talked about, we talk about South Africa. We talk about China. We talk about uh, so many different nations that we deem uh, uh, to be... Uh, to be um, uh, dictatorial or redeem them to be extremely racist. Uh, and that's because of what we are told in the news media. If we were to look at America comparatively speaking to the other nations in this world, you will find that one of the most degenerate nations on the face of the earth, if not the one, is the United States of America. And, and um, when, when you tell me that you cannot uh, institute laws to protect your children, and you know that it's going to happen again because it's happened so many different times, and you have no, you have no desire to change anything to protect them, you are the most degenerate nation on the face of the earth. There is nowhere on earth where, where um, there are massacres as there are in this nation. And when they did exist, the laws were changed and everything else ended. I watched the the, um, the soccer game yesterday, and, and um, uh, what happened is there was a ruckus because someone had sold uh, bogus tickets, and I saw the policeman rushing in to pull to uh, bring people out of the stadium and move them back from the um, entranceways. The policeman had no gun, and there was no ruckus other than the people obeying what they said. They moved them away. Why is it? In this country, uh, had that taken place, look at what happened on the, on the plane. If you could break somebody's jaw or, stu- or, or an, a flight attendant's jaw on the plane because they ask you to put on a mask and fasten your seatbelt, what do you think will happen with some drunks at a sports event trying to force their way in and the police will tell them they can't come in and they have bogus tickets? This America is violence. And I do believe that this country, as Ron has said, uh, is in, in, uh, was created in order to bring global redemption. And the, uh, the, the ones who are traveling this journey for global redemption uh, are pretty much on this phone. I 
I don't know anyone else who do what we're doing. And uh, until I meet some other people who do what we're doing, I would just, I would, I'm fully ready and willing to embrace the reality that no one else does it. It's okay with me. It doesn't matter one way or the other. Because right? I think about during the period when Jesus and um, those uh, who he taught uh, walked with him, there were no there were no others on the earth who were doing what he was doing. And as a result of that, we see what changed. The other week we were talking about um, the the, um, uh, the, the um, pillars falling from under this thing called Christianity, the church uh, in a free fall to death. And then here we are. Uh, that comes out in this report, uh, the the sexual antics that have been taking place for years in the Southern Baptist Church, and all of it being hidden, even to the extent that they kept a list of who were engaged in these activities, the, the pastors and leaders who were engaged in these activities. Not only did they keep a list, but they kept also the acts that they were that they were engaged in. Um, I, 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 when I heard that, and then I saw on TV where this lady stood up in church and, and um, approached uh, the pastor uh, and accused him of having taken her virginity on the floor of his office when she was a teenager. And, there, and all he said was, uh, all I can ask you to do to the congregation is forgive me. And I'm, and I'm thinking, this is it. This, this is the free fall of this thing called Christianity. The universe is at a breaking point with the, with religion. The universe is at a breaking point with racism. The universe is at a breaking point with all of these male, uh, this male-dominated uh, society. Let me put it this way, this Caucasian male-dominated society is at a breaking point with them. And, and this point of breaking is, is going to be seen uh, when the way that Females are responding uh, to everything that's taking place. They're not just the children who were killed, they are, who were murdered. They are in Texas, but also uh, the ones who were taken advantage of uh, in these different uh, church settings uh, and a host of other things that have taken place in the society. And I say freely, without reservation whatsoever, that until until we mobilize that Caucasian female to the point where she sees herself as being invincible and unstoppable, things will not change. White males is in their best interest to keep things as they are, and they will do everything they can to make that happen. <laughs> um, so the, the objective um, that, that, um, that we have is to bring peace and love and kindness to everyone on this earth, and that has to be birthed from the womb of the female. And the, uh, the womb that births it all is that African womb. But that womb of that Caucasian female uh, also has, um, uh, uh, can no longer be allowed to be barren. Um, that womb um, must be activated in order to bring uh, into uh, existence um, the, uh, the, the loving kindness that's necessary uh, to resolve, for the result um, to result rather in peace and harmony. Questions or comments? Yeah. Good morning, Pastor. Um, as you were speaking about uh, global redemption, uh, when you spoke of uh, fear, you know, I just gave it some thought in terms of Second Timothy, the first chapter, verse seven, where it says, "God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind." Um, you made some comments, you know, Reverend Harry Tubman, but in your view, um, can you maybe expound on that just in your own way in terms of that scripture? Yes, sir. That, uh, Reverend Nate, go ahead. Sorry. Yes. Um, that word that's used for power in, um, in, in the Old Testament, is, if you translate it from the Greek, it means dunamis. Uh, that's the same word from which we get dynamite. So um, the type of, of, of power that's being spoken of there is spiritual power, uh, the type of power that brought everything in and being, an explosive type of power uh, that 
that if you can imagine uh, a a um, a quarter being an explosive device and it explodes, and when it explodes, it it throws out debris and energy uh, all over the world. Something that small. That's the sense of this idea of power that um, was being spoken of in that regard. Um, the the um, the power must be. Um, coupled with love and kindness, because if it's not, then it will be used to be destructive. Uh, it would be used for selfish reasons as opposed to uh, being utilized for the benefit of humanity. So the explosive power of love is what we are the what we are the holders of, and it is a, it is in, indelibly. I'm sorry, it is inevitable that we uh, be the explosion that take place, not cause it, but be that explosion so that love and kindness will become um, available, uh, knowingly available to everyone. It's already available, but they're not aware of it. The other part of that is when it talks about a sound mind or it's talking about a sense, not just a seriousness, a seriousness, but also it's the mind, it's speaking of a mind that is governed uh, by the principles of the Creator. Uh, so, what, what what's being said here, in essence, is that um, uh, we have not, we do not have spiritual fear. Um, spiritual fear results in you being uh, um, in bondage, in bondage to whomever seeks to put you in bondage, even yourself. Uh, so, if we have not been given spiritual fear. We have been given spiritual courage, the courage uh, to um, embrace who we are, Elohim, the courage uh, to speak to who we are, the courage to act as we know who we are without having to even name it. It's like if you have to tell somebody you're a Christian, that's a problem. If you have to tell somebody you're Elohim, that's a problem. Just be who you are. That's what the scripture is speaking to. Is speaking to the whole concept of being the power that you were created to be, and it's speaking to the concept of being courageous enough to walk that pathway without regard to how other people perceive you or how they treat you. So, so it is in that regard that um, that that we embrace this idea of of of, of functioning uh, as Elohim are functioning the way we were created to function because anything else is unacceptable. And I hope that's what you are, that helps you, George, or clears up some things for you and others. Yes, so, thank you for that explanation, yep. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, it's Richard. If, I'm, if I might, just quickly, for those who have an interest and I don't necessarily mean to take, keep the conversation going toward a historical political sense, but I, I do think a great number of us don't have a good, true understanding of our own history. There is an, I, I recently have been attracted to some of the uh, speakings of a Native American um, activist and pastor whose name is Mark Charles. And I would just say, Mark Charles, if you want to YouTube that, you'll find some. He does a good job, I think, of bringing in pertinent parts of our history that people don't either have knowledge of or just don't keep in their mind to understand how things could be going in this direction. Um, and I, I just offer it as something useful. And the reason I, I pick YouTubes is because they're quick. It's a 30, 40 minute presentation or interview and there it is. You're not reading a 400 page book. There's just too many of those books. But the important thing is the, the, the information and knowledge is out there if it's important to you to have a more clear understanding. And from my perspective, a truer understanding of the basis upon which the United States was founded which explains it in a great deal why we're, we can never get past certain things. Um, and at the same time, 
spiritually and otherwise, we may be at a point where things are, are ready to change. But anyway, I just offer that and then I'll, I'll be quiet because we want the discussion to be in a different direction. That's fine. Uh, Richard, thank you. I um, honestly do not believe that it is possible uh, to understand the scripture, to understand our plight, to understand where we've been and where we're going if we don't understand where we've come from. The history is very important um, as a matter of truth. In order to um, use the scriptures to manipulate, uh, there was every effort made to separate the scriptures from history and to separate uh, the scriptures from understanding the political uh, road uh, that we have been um, that we have been traveling. It, you cannot understand uh, day-to-day life in regards to the scriptures if you don't understand the history of where we've come from and see the reason we are what we are. So I do think all of those work hand in hand. Thank you, Richard. Uh, anyone else? Okay, Sheldon, I don't know how far we are from what you were going to talk about today. However, it's not, um, there's not anything new for us to um, segue at any point uh, into um, an understanding of those things that, that uh, you, um, or any of us for that matter, uh, feel like we need to look at. All right. Well, um, hello, everyone. Uh, a little while ago, someone uh, asked, is there anything uh, else, and we touched on this before, that uh, can be done instead of having, uh, I mean, but excuse me, not instead, to besides having love and compassion. And that's something that we've uh, kind of discussed over the past uh, uh, two weeks, um, what, the past week or so. Um, and so I wanted to, I guess, use the platform more in terms of what just transpired uh, even between uh, uh, Texas and uh, Buffalo um, and the difference in actually uh, we're, we're approaching those uh, two things uh, ourselves individually uh, those two things uh, in two different ways as well as what has been going on uh, for a, a very long time um, I guess okay uh, before I do that, I am going to actually uh, explain a little bit, and I did a little bit before, in terms of the people or the Southern uh, 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 person or racist person that Pastor Rita was uh, talking about a few moments ago. Uh, but I want to talk about them in terms of their self, not how uh, they interact with the world, not the things that they do outwardly but more so how they view themselves and then go from uh, there and explain our, our connection, and our reaction as a connection. So as we were talking about uh, for, for quite some time now about the inner ego and the outer ego, and we talked about Cain and Abel, and we talked about how, in a sense, uh, Cain was the uh, the physical manifestation that was uh, on earth in a sense. And uh, Abel was actually his uh, inner self. Um, it was uh, the self that uh, took care of him, um, that was there as a guide uh, to help um, guide him, uh, support him, etc. Abel was the one that uh, created Cain's uh, physical uh, body. Now is not to, and I know those questions asked before, to look at them as uh, two different things because it is uh, completely impossible for uh, Abel to be uh, separated from Cain. It was only in Cain's uh, cons consciousness that Cain believed that Abel was a threat and didn't trust him and thought he was alone and separate. And uh, it was Cain who looked at himself as his own God and not saying his own God that he wanted to be all powerful, but had to be his own God in terms of his survival 
uh, depended on him taking everything into his own hands. He did not trust his environment. He did not trust his uh, world. He was uh, separated and uh, isolated. So in a sense, the earth, the world, et cetera, was his uh, enemy. Anything therefore was a threat. Now, that is the same exact mindset that these uh, Southern uh, racist people have. This idea of hoarding all these guns, being ready for a, a race war, oppressing others and things of that nature, all the, um, the terrible things that we know about, that comes from uh, a place of desperation and fear. Even the idea of lack comes from a place of fear in terms of one being greedy, because they feel like they will never have enough. And that in itself is, um, is fueled by, uh, by fear. Now, and all of us, uh, everyone on here knows of examples or um, even uh, most of us have definitely experienced occasions where it was ridiculous how fearful someone might have been even of our uh, presence. Um, to go uh, further, and uh, I guess I'm taking all of these, taking us all of these places to make a point about the, uh, not only our, but everyone's internal uh, condition of how they view themselves. The idea of how, generally speaking, those racist people view black people or brown people or anyone as other, they uh, view us as animals. That viewing us as animals, though, is because they don't think of themselves as uh, being worried and they don't even think highly of themselves. How we, every last one of us, interact with the world is based upon how we view ourselves, our thoughts, and our beliefs. It's no uh, different for anyone. Now, in terms of, uh, so I, I basically discussed why is this need to have so much power? Why there's need to have so much uh, um, wealth? Why there's need to have so much um, gun power, uh, et cetera, for protection? Why uh, there's a need uh, from uh, their um, their uh, from from their point of view to have so much law and legislation legislative uh, power uh, at their hand? It is for those reasons. Now, we also talked about forming our reality. Reality is formed by anyone based upon, again, our thoughts and beliefs. And our emotions connected to those thoughts and beliefs are what power uh, our thoughts and beliefs in terms of creating creation, creating this physical uh, reality. It is our emotions that we feel uh, the most powerful. No matter what that emotion is or how we may judge that emotion, uh, looking at that emotion as being something that is negative or positive, that is our uh, energy. That is when we are uh, energized. That's when we are energizing our thoughts with those very strong emotions uh, and feelings. That is us uh, creating. So with that being said, if we approach, and, oh, so my uh, comment was, that you cannot fight a war or try, well, you can't even fight a war uh, because you uh, hate war or you hate violence. That is putting out the same exact energy, uh, energized with our emotions because of our hatreds for war that does nothing uh, but perpetuate the situation because those already afraid and frightened individuals do nothing but become more afraid and justifiably so uh, I'm not saying I agree with it, but in terms of a natural standpoint, justifiably uh, so, because they feel a resistance and they feel more fear of the hatred uh, for what it is that they are creating um, and uh, doing. So the only uh, way to, I guess, address, I should say, a war is to actually do the opposite and focus on that which is uh, desired. And what is desire is love, peace, and, and balance. And that has to be cultivated from within 
and believed within and felt strongly within in order to create that in, uh, in a physical uh, reality way in our existence. Everything that occurs in our life individually as well as a collective is what we ourselves have made, uh, created up until this point, both individually and as um, a collective, uh, collective society. So uh, if we don't like what it is that we're currently dealing with, then we have to examine our thoughts and beliefs and actually uh, uh, change them. Uh, that's how reality, uh, reality works. Um, I mentioned, uh, does anyone have any thoughts or questions at this particular moment before I go further? Yeah, I, I'm listening to what you're saying. So I'm using your same example of Cain and Abel. So the reconnection then, or the, 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 the transitioning then, is the, the self, the, uh, Eve says, I, he has re replaced my son. I have, you know, so what you're saying, that is, is that the reconnection? You, as, as the Cain, as the person living in fear, uh, that is the turnaround. That is the, the, the part of you that, reconnects to what created you or, or, or seeing who you really are and moving back to that place, right? Is that, is that, what, what, is that another way of saying what you're saying, just using that, your, 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 your original example? Okay, I see. So the thing with Cain was, is Cain only saw himself as being a human being. And if it, as him only seeing himself as a human being, he saw himself as a limited, for example, earthly uh, existence, and that's all that it was. He was not uh, connected or allowed himself to be uh, aware of his everlasting life, in a sense. And therefore, the only thing he did was fought for uh, survival. So even coming from a standpoint of how uh, indigenous uh, um, uh, societies were, uh, and even Western thought around the world versus uh, Western uh, thought. I mean, I meant to say uh, indigenous and Eastern versus uh, Western, is having that ability or understanding of not looking at one's uh, existence is only being here limited to uh, this particular physical reality. And so it became a difference as well as a different relationship with the world and the earth. The world and the earth was not here as uh, something to uh, destroy you that you had to fight, but the earth and the world was here for something that was here to sustain you and you were to more so live in harmony. Uh, there was a respect and a regard um, for, the, uh, for the earth. Um, uh, it, it was a totally different approach in how they, how they saw themselves, but all of these things start from uh, you know, internally, uh, like, I, like I said. Now, as we talk about uh, uh, Cain and Abel, Abel is the one that was enabling Cain to exist. So we think about our bodies in terms of Abel was the one that was connected to the spirit world um, or was of the spirit world. Uh, Abel uh, was the one that knows how to do all the little small little things to regulate uh, uh, the body, like I always say, and I always say that because that is a, a miraculous thing that uh, I definitely think that we take for granted, and we can't even intellectually uh, really begin to understand all the uh, things that are going on within our bodies uh, for us to be here. We're just more so no different from being in a robot machine that we know how to uh, operate a little bit, but we don't know how any of the parts whatsoever, the mechanics, the engineering that actually is going into it. We're not controlling any of that. We're just pressing a few buttons, uh, so to speak. Um, did I answer your question a little bit, uh, Ron? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm still listening, just trying, trying to chew on it here. Uh, I, I, I tell you what I saw in your explanation, and, and it, this may not have been your intent, but this might be my mind. My mind kind of spins out of control a little bit sometimes. Uh, we, we focus a lot on the exterior thing that we see in the media 
and, and rightfully so, it's kind of in your face. And we we talk even a lot about Europeans and Caucasians and 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 the the, the destiny that they set up for the earth. Oh, uh, I I I kind of see the battle though, the the opposition a lot though as being the African himself. Oh. Uh, i.e. the church and that mindset and that part of uh, all of us that stands firm on what it believes. So th- the importance of us being loving kindness and, and standing standing up for that, being the, the firmness in the earth for that is it's as much for that as anything else. So when you when we look at things and talk about reform, uh, we, we're talking about the African as much as we're talking about any and everything else. Uh, ab- absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and the thing is, is everyone's uh, everyone has a responsibility, whether we know it or not, uh, or depending on how we use it, to actually create a reality. And we, whatever our beliefs are is so, uh, so to speak. The only limits to the uh, self or the limits that we set upon ourselves. So, and I'm gonna get into uh, that other question you had about nuance. So if we approach this particular situation that this is a very daunting or it's a darn impossible uh, situation, that in itself is us uh, very subtly uh, exuding fear and actually saying that we have no control over the uh, the situation. And then as we talk about the uh, getting caught into a loop, what we do is, uh, or what we have been doing is, we have been ob- ob- observing the present and looking at the present and saying, oh, this is uh, daunting, this is impossible, and then creating more situations to actually uh, prove that this is uh, daunting. So it's as if we have been going in circles and haven't gotten off of the the hamster uh, wheel. Uh, It is important for us as we um, we talk about um, showing love and compassion, there are several things that are going on, uh, even from an internal uh, standpoint. Uh, Love and comparison, just saying love and compassion without uh, any understanding it definitely can uh, sound uh, cheesy. But what is going uh, on below the surface is that you, you're opening yourselves up to those inner senses and more so to the spiritual aspects of yourself as you become more aware, more conscious of those, uh, those things. Uh, is in, is it possible for someone who's extremely just in physical reality um, and has that desperation and fear that we talked about uh, to experience uh, the greatest experiences of, uh, of love. Being uh, fearful and experiencing uh, love are, 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 are kind of like, I don't want to say two ends of the uh, spectrum, but they go in opposite directions. In order to experience um, love, it requires one be open and uh, vulnerable. And I don't mean vulnerable in terms that you are weak. It means vulnerable in terms of you open up uh, your heart uh, to, to feel. Um, also with uh, love and uh, compassion, uh, it was another part that I was gonna say about love and compassion. I forget, uh, I forget at the moment, but also what it uh, does is it puts that energy uh, out. And then people then begin to interact with that versus interacting uh, you know, with fear or a wall. It, it, all of us uh, understand situations that we've dealt with uh, people in certain environments and we get certain kind of energy and we may, uh, as a result, uh, react to that energy in a certain type of way. We can tell when someone's uh, being open. We can tell when someone's being loving and uh, genuine. At uh, some point, we've even been uh, able to uh, be able to feel when someone even trying to trick us and trying to uh, act polite, but then, uh, you know, uh, have uh, have bad uh, intentions. 
all of these things are things that we are carrying with us on a day-to-day -day basis. All of us interact with, uh, with one another um, indirectly, uh, you know, every day. Like, is, is it possible for us to be separated? Uh, just in the same way, um, a rogue cell in the body will not necessarily fit or cause problems. It's the same way uh, uh, with us. Um, any, any thoughts or questions so far? Uh, what I've said thus far? I, I just I'm wanted, getting... this is Barbara. I just want to go back uh, to Ron's question about uh, Seth um, from a different perspective uh, of whether Seth was the, the, because you got Cain and Abel, and they're an entity in and of themselves. Their attitudes, they are, they are, they are egos and 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 and, and uh, the alternate uh, for the ego. Um, and then Eve says that God has given me another child in place of Abel. So I, I don't know if Abel, well, no, Abel was born uh, while, while Cain was still um, living. I'm sorry, Seth was born while Cain was still living. So what I, thought I understood part of your question, Juan, was, was, was Seth then given to them um, as, a, um, uh, as a, not as a replacement, but as a, as, as, as a child who would carry out the blended, uh, um, the blended, uh, Purposes yeah, that they had in mind for their children, um, yeah. that that they would that they would be followers of of the Creator, blah blah blah, uh, and and so it would seem that Seth was uh, because he became the one through whom Enoch was born, through whom and Enoch had Methuselah. Uh, it, it, he became the one through whom Noah's descendants came. Uh, uh, and apparently, uh, Cain's family uh, was wiped out during that period of time when Noah and his family were sustained through the flood. So it it uh, it, it, it implies that Seth became um, uh, that that one through whom the um, the line of of I guess Elohim, if if, if you will, continues. Well, Barbara, the, uh, we mentioned before that uh, even though Cain thought that he had, um, uh, in, a, in a sense, uh, annihilated or killed Abel, that never uh, took, took place. In the same uh, sense, uh, all of the people that we look at today um, that do uh, things uh, that will be viewed as uh, evil, they too, in a sense, have an uh, Abel. Abel is not uh, destroyed. And those uh, individuals won't be destroyed uh, in, in a sense uh, either because they, though they do uh, cease to exist in this physical uh, reality, they don't actually cease to exist. And so that self that uh, you were talking about uh, in a sense could be the, uh, the redemption uh, I don't want to say the, the second company because that sounds like uh, Jesus, but uh, a lot of what we uh, have talked about, we talked about everything is a matter of awareness and is a journey that uh, goes on and on and on. And it's not just this lifetime. And that's how we mistakenly look at it uh, a lot of times. And so I see this as a con continuation uh, in a sense of I'm trying to figure out how, how, how to say this way it still can be uh, followed. Um, the growth 
and the maturity of uh, that came in getting it right. Um, I prayer, right? Pastor. Well, all I was going to say is I, I see it from both sides, and, and what I thought I heard in Sheldon's original explanation. To me, what what I, why I mentioned self is it's kind of what Bob was saying. I see self as a, a a different place of awareness. I see him as a more of an eye opener and as a compassion kind of thing. Whereas it's like, okay, you see this thing and this is the direction you take. But hold up, wait a minute. You got to be inclusive. You got to show compassion here. You're not seeing the the bigger picture. So here it is. That's why I, I mentioned uh, uh, other black people, you know, other, other Africans, uh, as we unravel this thing. If we look at it from the perspective of, okay, uh, we have to, the modifications or the, the, the transformation has to come to the, to the European. And if the European, if the European, the dullest, it's, it's the Southern whites, it's the, but keeping in mind, back up let's get self self represents those that are also tied to that self represents those who have bought into that way of of seeing things and now it gives you a different place a different place of awareness of seeing the totalness of this and coming at it from a different perspective so the being inclusive of of everything from a more compassionate place and, and like I said, that's my mind running with something, just just hearing what you were saying, and, and I, I may have taken it in a different place, but I, I, I saw Seth as something entirely different when I was listening that you talk about it. I, and I, I, Ron, I saw, I saw, as Barbara used the word, blending. Uh, yeah. Suppose that, moment that, um, suppose that, that the whole purpose for um, Cain and Abel being included in the um, in the story itself was to show us what it really looks like when you're aware of who you are in terms of um, the image and likeness, and that would be Abel. Now we know what that looks like, and showing us what it looks like uh, when you decide what you want things to be as opposed to what they are supposed to be and how vicious it can become when you don't have your way or when you perceive uh, that someone is doing something that you're incapable of doing. And then Seth becomes that, 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 um, that blending of the two, which says that now that you've seen uh, what it looks like to be everything. Now that you also see what it looks like when you make the choices to do it your way, now you have an opportunity uh, to um, to have both in one place. You can make the choice to do it your own way, or you can make a choice uh, to embrace who you are, and now you will live in the same world that. Cain lived in, but your approach to things will be different than what they were because they are now being influenced by what Abel is. Does that make sense? Yes, Pastor, that yeah. makes sense. Because I was thinking that uh, Cain took and killed that part of himself that he didn't want to, you know, to be. And so when he did that, See if if he if he would have felt that that part of him, and 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 you said it was more people out there in the world besides him and Cain. I think if he would accept that part of him, and then when he left and went out, he would be able to do the thing that Jesus was doing. You understand what I'm taking that to? I understand what you're taking. Yeah, I do, I, and um. I see exactly what you're saying, because he did say, uh, they will kill me. And and um, the whole idea of that is, who are the day? So could it possibly be that the whole 
metaphor it is about identifying personality traits uh, that are in existence in all of humanity. And the one that is, becomes more evident uh, to us in, in individually and collectively uh, is the one that we express a greater affinity for. And the uh, picture of Cain and Abel or more of a identifier for what to look what it looks like uh, to um, function in those different capacities in terms of personality. Does that make sense? Yeah, because as all y'all uh, talking exactly, I see it as just uh, an allegory and uh, Cain, and only in terms of what Cain uh, represented it. Like it, it's all, it's all the same uh, multi uh, entity person in a sense. Um, Cain. Yeah, Allegory, what was in my mind? You're right. Yeah, okay. Cain, what what happened was that when I when I was talking about that uh, that growth, that Cain mindset is what died out and ceased to exist, and self was the combination of the uh, two. So the only reason why it was Cain and Abel is because Cain identified separately and would not, not acknowledge Abel, even though Abel was there and they were always one. Cain would not accept, uh, accept Abel. Now, let's look at that in today's vernacular. So, would it be safe to say that Cain uh, is a picture of what it looks like to be highly religious intertwined with governing bodies. And Abel looks like the image and likeness of Elohim. And Seth um, is a combination. Seth understands the dangers of religion, the dangers of uh, allowing ourselves to be governed uh, by uh, governing bodies that that are influenced by religion, and also Seth recognizes the necessity of embracing who we are, the Elohim, uh, the image and like the Elohim, so that those who would that Cain spoke of would kill me, those are the ones who would be influenced by us. For example, we often talk about. It, uh, it is wrong for us to look at people in the church and in religious settings and think that we are somewhere beyond them. That's wrong. Um, that would be the same as Cain and Abel. We would be the Abel and they would be the Cain. But we are set, which means that we embrace them and we, and we understand that it is um, our burden to bear in terms of uh, of um, um, not only encouraging, but putting in the macro what is necessary for them to be able to see that they that we are no different than them and they are no different than us in terms of the way we were created and the purpose for which we were created. Because there is no, there is no, um, Barbara made mention of um, uh, the, um, the, the descendants of Seth surviving through Noah, right? And that being the case, what do we see? Uh, we see the same thing with Noah as we did with Seth. I'm sorry, with Cain and Abel, because of what happened at the end uh, of the uh, flood, with uh, Noah's attitude being drunk on the world, on on the material world, uh, as opposed to uh, being drunk uh, in terms of the spiritual. So we saw both of them. Um, and the descendants of Noah, we saw both of um, we saw the allegory uh, being restated, but in a different way uh, in the descendants of Noah. And, and then we saw out of that came an attitude that says uh, that um, that that well, I'm not going there because it would take us to a different place. But anyway, we we saw that repeated uh, in the descendants of Noah, but in the less definitive way, if that makes sense. I guess 
what what you are all saying is 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 simply what I had in mind when I talked about the b- blending, meaning the balancing balancing of those two thoughts. Uh, when you can balance the cane in yourself, because you know Cain was a, I mean he was a good farmer. I mean he he could make things grow. He 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 could. He could he, uh, and when he was not a if when when that when that cane part of us is not obsessed with 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 self, uh, and can think about that able part of self, uh, that that as 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 Sheldon said, it helps you understand that its role is important as well. Then the self part of it is that seed, if you will, um, because in Genesis five three it talks about Adam lived 130 years when he fathered a son in his own life, fathered Seth in his own likeness. That's what the, and his, and according to his image, meaning Seth was after Adam's likeness and Adam's image, whereas Adam was like unto uh, the creator's likeness and image. In other words, then that, that seed continues um, uh, throughout, there will always be that seed. Of righteousness, and 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 that's what has to be nurtured and tended, and so when that's part of the the harmony, that's part of the balancing, that's part of the 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 uh, connectedness with with the spiritual uh, part of who we are, the balancing of the canes and the ables in ourselves, so that we are not selfish, uh, totally, uh, but we are not also um, so giving. That we are that that we're good for nothing in that arena as well, so it has to be a a healthy balance. And to me, um, in a sense, Seth represented uh, that balance that was brought to bear. Thanks. So Barbara, listening to your your explanation and, and what Pastor and Sheldon have said, the they then what the they be the the self and and the 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 uh able with with it with it, and what i mean and i and i don't want to confuse this at all uh could that be saying is we will no longer let you take over and and create an imbalance we will no longer allow you to to dominate uh the the, the way that this man supposed to 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 operate so the the burst that you mentioned is an uh, indication that balance had been achieved. There there is no uh, any more uh, you're you're dominating or taking over uh, the the attributes of Cain. And if if that is the truth, then if what we're looking at and putting looking at it today, uh what we are, are seeing then is the destruction or the 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 cane uh, which has dominated the earth is seeking without in in a spiritual sense seeking his balance again and and that is the involvement of the the self and the 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 being loving kindness and and being uh, the awareness of who you truly are versus who you have programmed yourself to be, and and I I'm, I don't want that to sound confusing. Does that make sense at all? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Bob. I was simply going to respond that in a sense it does make sense to me because when you see white supremacists that have that have uh, um, gone to one extreme. When I when I see Cain and Abel, I see extremes instead of a blending and a learning to uh, the importance of 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 what each can contribute to the wholeness of of the entity. But right now, when 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 Sheldon talks about white white uh, supremacists, et cetera, et cetera, I see the Cain part of of us. Thinking about only my survival, I have no thoughts. Don't even care. Don't even think I care. 
about the survival of mankind. It is only me and mine. And so, yeah, I, 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 do, I do see uh, uh, what we see today is, is just an explosion in, 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 in living color, in, 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 in bigness of what Cain um, showed us uh, that we were, that we could be uh, very mm -hmm. selfish, very evil oriented, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, uh, suppose for a moment that um, we could we look at this uh, a different way. Suppose that what's been sacrificed, sacrifice is done in order to do what? To remove an obstacle that impedes you uh, from receiving from the creator that which the creator has for you or created you to be, something like that. On that on, on that. Based on that premise, um, the thing sacrificed by Abel was his animalistic attitude because he sacrificed the animal, right? The blood of an animal, the life of an animalistic attitude. And and Cain um, held on to his animalistic attitude and um, was only willing to give up what he chose to give up, and that was part of his uh, material possession as opposed to his attitude. Does that make sense? Yes. And if that's the case, then, then the reason that Cain started is crying out is because the animalistic attitude was given up. It's of um, this earth consciousness, we still hear the cry to give up, to sacrifice the animalistic attitude so you can be who you were created to be. And what is that cry about? The cry, could the cry possibly be about redemption? Redeem, being redeemed from, from the dominance of materialism? And that redemption of that um, deliverance can be seen in Seth. And um, from Seth, we begin to see how we are supposed to bring about harmony in the earth. And that harmony comes through balance, being balanced between the material world and the spiritual world, meaning that the recognition of the material world is for the subsistence uh, of this body as opposed to our dominance over other people. Is that confusing? Or is it not to me? That 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 makes that makes sense. One is based in materialism, the other one is based in in the thing that would hold it to the earth and materialism, which is animalistic kinds of things. And if I am willing to to sacrifice uh my animalistic uh Tendencies, attitudes, interests, uh, then, then I, that 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 opens me uh, to so much more that's available to me spiritually in terms of knowing well where do I fit? What am I supposed to do? What's my purpose? It's not it's not to hold on to materialism, and it's not to come from the perspective of of animalism. It, it's to come from a much broader uh, perspective. Uh, that covers uh, more than just myself. I, I, my coverage is is humanity. So Seth becomes a human. If, if, if Seth is that balance, then Seth is human, right? Or the personification of of what a human is. In that allegory, yes. That, that, that's what I'm talking about, that allegory, yeah, the personification of that. But it then also speaks that even though Seth is the personification of that, if it's not guarded zealously, that you can always revert uh, to that animalistic attitude or vacillate between the two. Uh, I'm sorry, or ebb. That's an ebb and flow between the two. And that is the reason that Noah ended up the way he did um, with the uh, diverse 
attitudes of his children or on his offspring. But Seth also uh, helps us see that there is always that opportunity for redemption um, in the seed. There's always that opportunity. So um, I, I, that that's what I see in 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 Seth as the human. For right. not not only not only in that allegory, but in the future generations. There's always that opportunity um, to do what we're doing right now, which is which is the redemption of humanity through loving kindness, through balance, uh, through understanding who we are, through knowing who we are, and through functioning uh, uh, in the knowledge of who we are. So what we've done in essence in the last few minutes is is take what we have been taught about Cain and Abel and allowed the universe to show us that it was more than just Abel seek, seeking to worship God or submit to God. It was more than that. It was a dying to self in terms of the animalistic attitude. And we were never we were never shown that during our religious discussions in regards to this. It was always about two different brothers, you know. And then, and then taking that part out of it, the two, the the, the two different brothers, uh, and looking at where we are today, it shows us uh, a much different perspective. Uh, uh, so we are a manifestation of each other in the earth, trying to find our blend trying to find uh where how we fit in. And, and and don't the earth is not the earth is, is, is been leaning to one direction for so long is is the difficulty here. But hopefully what we the, the, the weight of righteousness and, and and truth and the search for love and kindness and, and, and that is covered up with all the religion is starting to bring balance to the scale and and it has nothing to do with the number of people it's the the desire of the heart so it helps to put things in perspective and not see the two brothers uh because when you see two you you see a difference you see the the opposing view but what we're attempting to do is make those two one and the going back to what Sheldon originally said about not concentrating on the war, but seeing the results of peace and the love of uh, that, that brings that vision uh, closer into view when you do it that way. So the, the battle, it, 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 it kind of takes the, the, the sting out of the battle, I guess. Uh, and, you know, and, and I'm, I'm kind of rambling here, but, but I hope you see what I'm saying. You know, you are whatever come after I am, right? Yeah, I want to I want to uh, eliminate the battle. Um, and well, Ron uh, asked the question about something I asked yesterday about uh, our thoughts and the little nuances of them um, being very, uh, very powerful. And so, yes, definitely want to not see Cain and Abel as being two separate individuals, just seeing Seth as Cain grown up, uh, so to speak, and being aligned with Seth, because Seth never, I mean, because Abel never actually uh, uh, went any, uh, anywhere. No matter how much I uh, hate and deny myself or think I am uh, the scum of the uh, earth, I am pitiful, and I can think I am the epitome of uh, of evil, even though uh, I may deny awareness. Um, I am still uh, spiritual. I still uh, am Elohim. Um, when we talk about re- redemption, um, is I don't look at it as something as being 
a huge feat uh, because with it being a huge feat, it's as if this is with a particular uh, thing that uh, is either on or is off. It either happens or it doesn't. And it is a great uh, deal or it takes a, a great thing to actually elapse that point to the point where we have this uh, victory, uh, so to speak, where this is a conscious thing uh, that is happening moment by moment by, uh, by moment. And so this becomes only as difficult as we believe uh, it is. And the idea of thinking that is uh, difficult actually in itself makes it more difficult than it would otherwise uh, be. Um, uh, what I was commenting on about the nuances of our uh, thoughts um, and beliefs being very powerful, the idea of what, somebody help me, was it the, the burden, I, I, I lost some words, the burden of uh, stepping into place of someone, what's that phrase? Intercession, oh, what are you talking about? Ron, you remember? Standing, standing in the gap? Yes, the burden of standing in the gap, yes, 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 thank you, um, whoever that was. The idea of believing that is a burden to stand in the gap automatically sets up the conditions where we expect that thing to be extremely difficult. It doesn't necessarily mean that, I'm not saying at all that it won't be difficult, but that's what we set up. It's almost as if it's like, okay, I'm gonna stand in this gap, but I want to create the conditions where this thing is tough or a battle for me to do so. I want uh, this to be a strain uh, on me. And it is possible to stand in the gap just merely by uh, us being peace, love, and, and harmony. Uh, yesterday, uh, when Nick was talking about being like in a work uh, environment and creating the conditions, the energy, et cetera, um, in, in a particular environment by first doing it from within. And so, and we explained by what that means to do that within is to, in a sense, calm the storm from within and feel a calmness and a peace uh, from within, uh, with inside ourselves. And then we are then creating that uh, outwardly. The same thing for uh, the burden of standing in the, uh, in the gap. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, a, a burden. And so that's when I was going back to uh, Ron, what he said, all of us are learning, all of us are on a journey. And definitely what Pastor Richard said a little while ago in terms of people being in different uh, places. And I know some of us certainly were in some of those places that we now see how we may have been doing ourselves a disservice uh, in the past. And we were so unaware uh, and conscious uh, compared to where we are at this particular, uh, this particular, uh, particular moment. But that makes it incumbent also upon us and it makes it our responsibility in a sense to, I don't wanna say get this uh, right like it's uh, life and uh, death, but I am saying uh, get it right in terms of we in a sense dictate how easy it is uh, for others to then become aware as well. And the more that we ourselves think is uh, difficult the more that we, in this case, I mean it purposely, battle with thinking uh, that uh, is difficult or we, we go into it as in a battle or difficulty. We do a disservice to others in a sense who are not exactly where we are in our, uh, in our awareness. Elna, I follow what you're saying um, by, by, by calling it a burden or by perceiving it is a burden uh, begins to set up uh, those kinds of potentially negative kinds of uh, of thought processes. But when we when we when we decide it, it 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 doesn't have to be a burden. It's simply an intention. It's an intention to uh, infuse loving kindness. It's an intent. It's a, it's an intention to to do something rather than uh, see it as a weight. It is not a weight. Uh, that drags us down. 
and that makes it difficult. An intention doesn't necessarily need to be a weight. It can be very positive and that I intend for this to happen. In the midst of all this in chaos, all this chaos, my intention is that there is loving kindness and peace and harmony. And 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 when you when you don't, I I, I see exactly what you're saying. I don't know if I'm saying it, but when you don't see it as a burden, it simply becomes what it is that you intend. Um, yes, you know, we, from 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 we, what you from what from the from the rec- as an extent, from the direction you said, it becomes your intent. Yeah, yes. And, and what we're doing with our uh, our thoughts and intentions and desires is that particular thing, uh, as I said before, with our uh, e- emotions, with the, which are charged and powerful, we are, con- we are still creating those conditions uh, from within. So if we are, are waiting, uh, putting on... Uh, <laughs> I say this uh, kind, kind of jokingly, our whole uh, armor of God uh, to fight, we are then preparing in our hearts and experiencing, in a sense, um, war, or uh, ready to go for war. In the same way, uh, and I want to make this, uh, this uh, connection, in the same way that our emotions and thoughts uh, creates uh, or, or leads our bodies to make certain chemicals within our body that uh, that affect our body, like uh, cortisone, uh, serotonin, and things of that nature that affects our bodies in certain ways. And that comes strictly psychology, psychologically through a thought. It's the same way that we create the reality in terms of our physical uh, reality. We don't know or uh, understand from an intellectual standpoint the mechanisms, or I say this in, uh, I use air quotes because no one can see me, the science behind that. But the nature of our reality is we use the same exact type of science in the, uh, in the same way to create a reality. And so as much as even this is us working uh, collectively as a society uh, uh, and, and uh, working on our abilities uh, as, a, uh, as a society, we do that individually as well. So we ourselves also are growing and learning uh, and mastering our abilities. And so that, would, that right there is like what I'm talking about uh, right now. And, and see, I, I, I see what you're, you're saying, and I, I, I love this, this, this understanding. Uh, I, I'm, it, it, here's, I, I guess, and, and this is where the eighth cent kick, uh, kicks in, my, my, my mind is taking me somewhere with this. Where it's taking me to the place where I need to see this and plug in. And, and what I see is uh, when, when I talk about, things on that I see when I see a, a face a Donald Trump or Mitch McConnell or I hear about laws passed or this I see the European I see white people and that automatically separates them from me I can't put those things together with me as hard as I've tried uh, that's that's difficult to do uh, and what I'm seeing what I'm hearing now and what this is making me see is you are not only Cain, but you're also Abel and Seth. And you are the big brother and the little brother. And you have to grow the little brother up to, to, in, 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 in order to bring balance. So when I, when I put that, pull that together, I see that I am all those things. I am one. And the, the principalities are not the people. Uh, the, the people may be a manifestation of, of things, but that is not who they are. Uh, so you operate, as I pull this together and operate from that perspective and, and look at this, uh, I, I'm, it, it kind of softens the blow. It kind of helps me see the blend. And, uh, and, and, and it's just another way of looking at it. Because we we've talked about this from every angle, I don't know how many times, 
but for some reason this is this is catching root in, in a different place in me right now. So I I, I embrace it and, and and appreciate it. Yeah, and I, uh, and I want to add one thing to the the Cain and uh, Abel uh, thing uh, that is um, related here. So even what I'm talking about in terms of all of us uh, growing in a sense, it wasn't the case that Cain just just all of a sudden one day he was he was dead and it was just victory. It was more so an attitude and that mindset that was slowly dying out and also with self being uh, younger self in a sense was uh, growing and becoming stronger and stronger and uh, taking uh, over. That's the same uh, thing that is happening with, with us as, uh, as an allegory. Um, we are moment by moment always becoming. Even right now, this entire talk that we're having uh, right now is about becoming, is about uh, becoming uh, one, more aware of um, all uh, the aspects of ourselves, the more the aspects of ourselves, and then two, accepting uh, that and embracing it and being one with it uh, as well. That's what, uh, that, that's what we're actually uh, doing. I, 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 I heard Pastor, I think, getting ready to oh, okay. <laughs> jump in. But, 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 but I, I, I want to follow up on what you said about becoming versus being. And what is the difference? Because it's, it's, all about, it's all about being to me. And my being is my awareness in the now, which means that when I look at becoming, it's where I'm headed. But as I, as I have these, um, um, uh, this awareness at different points of who I am, it, 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 it's still, it's, to me, that's being, um, I, I, I just like to hear some comments about the differences okay. between being and becoming. Okay, it's, it's, it's very uh, subtle. And when I say becoming, I don't mean that we were, uh, uh, as in you were never, uh, uh, and I'm, I'm glad you brought this up, never be it like you would never arrive. When I say becoming, I mean the same as an artist who is always uh, creating and growing from that standpoint and making something uh, new. Uh, in a very, very creative, uh, creative way. That's what I mean by, uh, by uh, becoming. Uh, in a sense, growth uh, in itself uh, never stops or expansion uh, in a sense uh, never, uh, never stops. As we, uh, when I say becoming, uh, when we think about, uh, well, let me use uh, one, one example. And this is gonna be extremely uh, macro. Our idea of what the creator slash God is, is only based upon, or I would say limited to, what we can understand from our current understanding and experiences, all our uh, collective experiences and this physical reality. With that being said, there are aspects of God, a God exists in ways that we can't even begin to comprehend, we can't even imagine. So with that being said, that's what I meant by uh, be, becoming. Also what I uh, meant, and, and, and it, it can be being as well, uh, and I'm glad you brought this up as well because it was a thought that I had earlier in terms of how we are growing our abilities, et cetera. I don't want to say what is it, what is important because I don't want to say like <laughs> like black and white type of thing. But, but what we are incumbent incumbent to do is to be in this physical reality, embrace this uh, physical reality, and joyously create, learn our abilities, our powers, and to understand how we create with our thoughts and beliefs. When I going back a few weeks ago, in the same manner, a child would pretend to be something 
and do it uh, joyous. We're in a sense, uh, in a lesser sense, doing the same exact thing in this physical uh, reality. And to do that with love, compassion, and appreciation. I talked about before in terms of uh, looking at the, uh, this uh, earth as uh, from, from one standpoint as being at war with. And then I talked about the sense of living uh, with the earth and having respect uh, for the earth and living along with the earth and understanding and having appreciation of the earth uh, providing uh, nourishment um, at least for this uh, physical uh, existence and things of, uh, of that nature. So, it, and even with a child that is, um, in a sense they are being, they are steady creating uh, that experience that they're having when they're pretending to be whatever it is, uh, doctor, astro um, astronaut, or, or what, uh, what have you. But yes, you're being in the moment. And as you're being, I guess you would say, we are steady uh, becoming or just, or just creating. I would just say just, just creating, creating what hasn't been created before. Sheldon, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. So when I asked yesterday or said that there's more, I know that there's more. Am I not knowing that there's, am I not aware of there's more because I'm not ready for the more? No, uh, the fact that, and I said this yesterday, the fact that you said that you know is, uh, is more, is you actually uh, demonstrating or at least showing that you have a confidence and that in itself is opening yourself up to uh, experience more. You have an expectation to experience more, and you just haven't shut off the idea of there being more. You are being open uh, to a uh, new discovery. So that is being on the uh, on the right track. The person who is uh, who is desperate and who doesn't believe that and think that is uh, nothing else. That is the person that feels completely uh, powerless and often the reason why uh, people um, commit suicide. It's because they uh, feel no power whatsoever and they feel completely hopeless. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I like the question about the, 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 the being and, and the becoming i mean that that it describes humanity the, the the real essence of humanity you we recognize that the here and now is what's important we recognize that we are the human and what that entails and, and how that melts away the time factor as to what is past what is what is future it, it is about the now uh but at the same time you are steady becoming you are evolving you are becoming aware of the, the the essence and the power of who you are and uh you know and, and that is even evident in in our discussion today the you know as pastor has, has said a number of times we open up scripture uh time after time and take another layoff of it. and just what we're doing is further bringing enlightenment and awareness of who we are to ourselves uh, as we operate in the now. So those two things go hand in hand. And there, there's, uh, it, it, and as you say, just, just, just the power and the energy in being that and, and understanding that and, and, and uh, kind of kind of reveling in that. Just, just yeah, I, I, I like that. I like the question. Yeah, is is I don't want to say is is important. I said we'll be doing ourselves a great uh, favor, for, like both individually uh, and collectively as a society, and our individually having an effect on society, if we uh, approach a um, uh, life in that manner. And like I said, that that appreciation for uh, for a physical uh, physical life. Now, there's also a difference. Uh, uh, between 
how, how should I say this? It's not necessarily a fine line, but some people are obsessed with physical life and they uh, live life as all that uh, is as well. And going back to Cain and Abel, we can possibly say uh, Cain uh, or many people are uh, consumed and only uh, interested in, the, in the, uh, the physical. What I am saying uh, to do is I am saying along with your inner senses, with the understanding uh, and experience of uh, more so who and what uh, we uh, are, um, I am saying uh, creating and enjoying life from that standpoint. Now, also that automatically involves uh, love and compassion and a connection and a respect and regard uh, as well in terms of, in a sense, being, as we've been talking about animal and humanistic, being a more, uh, in a sense, uh, healthy. And when I say uh, healthy, the only thing that I mean is that which is operating uh, in balance and operating to its fullest, we become more of a healthy uh, uh, human being. And, and when I say that, I'm, I'm talking about from like a spiritual and physical, uh, physical standpoint. I mean, there's one last thing, but any thoughts or questions? I lost everyone. No, you're still here. We're here. Any uh, thoughts or, or questions? I have one. This is for Mel. When you we were talking about the difference between being and becoming, becoming they they coexist, and becoming is is it where we talked about widening our breadth, our depth of awareness. Yeah, the only thing, uh, they're, they're closely in, in, intertwined, but yes, yeah, so in a sense, uh, uh, being is kind of like you're on a, a course and just in enjoying yourself mm -hmm. and becoming is more so is what uh, happening, but you're concentrating uh, on, on being. So if you were enjoying uh, yourself and let's say you were just uh, uh, dancing or when we get into the, um, think about that you were a painter. And uh, let's say you just uh, are, are in this uh, zone, uh, in uh, flow, and you're just painting. You have no idea uh, even thinking about uh, what is to, to, to come. You only uh, feel yourself naturally uh, making uh, strokes. And you're right there in the moment, getting certain colors and things uh, like that, right? Mm -hmm. You're being in that particular uh, moment. What is becoming is the artwork. Okay, got a good understanding, thanks. Yeah, but what we're is concentrating it, on is being. Is it safe to say that the being is what invites the becoming? Uh, so the, the, the becoming is the result of the being? Like, yes. like Evelyn said, uh, I know that there is more. When we say, that resonates with me that is the becoming i have i have opened myself up by being i'm i'm and and the yielding is opening me up to become more so i see this thing and i have an aha moment and it opens me up to more so we it, it, it's it's the two things go together and, and and they feed each other as we as we become the more more aware and as we yield to that uh more comes to us yeah so it, it it's it's a it's a constant thing yeah and, and ron as you as you speak about that you know energy moves matter you know through the process of becoming and what we're saying is that again as energy flows as our attention goes it's the matter of the substance of who we are you know what I mean? Before the beginning began, and because of this energy, it's now moving us through the process of becoming. So as we continue to, um, you know, elevate, or as we continue to manifest through this energy, you know what I mean? Is that 
process of now coming, which is um, what they refer to in the Kepara Septepi, which is the coming into beginning for the first time. So this energy again moves this matter, which is part of that Pangea, that, that, that substance that was already there from the beginning, but we're now connecting in that way where the energy is now moving through this process of becoming. I don't know if that resonates, but I just wanted to respond to what you're saying, the process of becoming as far as energy moves. I'm done. Um, may I interject something? Mm-hmm. When I think about the idea of being and becoming, I see them as um, inextricably tied together. And, and the reason I say that is because when you become aware and embrace it, you're being it. And I use that term it very loosely, but for the sake of uh, clarity, when you embrace it, you're being it. But the thing that you have not seen or become aware of is the is the is the becoming. You're becoming something that you don't see yet, even though you are what you have seen, and you are what you have not seen. Until you become aware of it, you are becoming. Does that make sense? For example, we've always been Elohim. We have gone through a stage of becoming what they are of God. Pastor Richard. They are of God. Pastor Richard, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, you were uh, low um, for all of a sudden. Okay. So we. we when we not aware, can you hear me now? Uh, hold on, hold on one second. Can you mute the phone? You may start can, can you mute your phone, please? Okay. Um, I said that when when we were unaware that we were Elohim, right? Um, when we embraced it, then we, we went through a process of becoming, becoming what? Becoming aware of what that means uh, to be Elohim. Becoming aware of, of um, how this took place. So the becoming and the being are inextricably tied together. So you cannot become if you're not already something. And if you're already something, you become in the desire of what you want, of what you recognize you are. It doesn't happen overnight, and that's one of the reasons I believe that it was difficult for some of us uh, to e- to immediately embrace the reality that we are Elohim. And it was, dif- it was more dif- difficult for some than others, yet it was still difficult. However, once we embrace that, that the idea that we are indeed Elohim, we're beginning now uh, to see what that means, and everything that we see, we we are it. We're becoming it because even though we've already been it, we didn't know, we didn't even know what it looked like, so we didn't even know it existed. Does that make sense? It does. And on the heels of that, I remember what it is that I uh, wanted to say. And... This is the beginning point. We would all do ourselves a big favor if um, we started to shift away from uh, looking at things as good and evil. As you uh, talk about that, that, as we talk about being and becoming. What we view as uh, evil at its core is only something that is being done that does not in our eyes uh, seem to represent love and compassion. It seems to be void of love and compassion. Meaning that that particular thing also is just uh, lacking uh, uh, awareness uh, in a sense. Every single thing that we could, uh, that we can possibly talk about that has happened in uh, the world, no matter how uh, terrible we may think of it, and it may look, we can talk about Cain, pick any uh, 
um, personality or entity out of the uh, out of the Bible. The evil is of the evil. That entity, that person, in that particular uh, uh, scenario, simply lack uh, awareness. Now, the reason why I said that we would do ourselves a favor to transition from looking at things as uh, good and evil is because, in a sense, we do the same thing uh, that I mentioned, uh, as we mentioned before, was to look at that, to, to concentrate on the evil. Uh, part, uh, so to speak, and to put that type of uh, energy out. No, I'm not saying uh, we like uh, what took place. I'm absolutely uh, not saying that. That is not what I am. Uh, I am suggesting. What I am uh, suggesting, uh, rather, is we do ourselves uh, a favor from uh, within, with our thoughts and what uh, resonates with us, or what we uh, interact is that of uh, awareness, that thing, love and compassion, that is absent uh, from that particular uh, situation. And it's not even the case uh, in these situations that is absent as if love, compassion, and awareness doesn't exist. It is uh, wherever that came from, uh, the confusion was not seen or sensing love uh, and compassion. That uh, entity or the group of people that I mentioned that were uh, 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 approached the uh, world of the earth as I have to survive. When you feel like you have to survive, it is because of a, a lack of love and, uh, and, and compassion. Any uh, thoughts or uh, questions, comments, anything uh, on that? I don't. Um, if there are not any shelter, we might be at a good stopping spot, uh, spot now. We've been give them a chance to uh, uh, digest what we've been talking about. That that works for me. I'm uh, even happy that at least that can be, uh, you know, just thought about or even uh, considered. Yes. Sir. Now, again, we won't be there tomorrow. I uh, know that people will be doing other things tomorrow probably, and, um, and I didn't think of but getting ready for work. However, we have some uh, engagement with doctors tomorrow, and um, I would not be able to be there, and I don't want to uh, be, um, impinge, infringe on someone else's plans for tomorrow by asking them to... Uh, do what I would be doing tomorrow on a holiday. Thank you. Okay. With that, enjoy your family. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Have a great week. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Everybody, enjoy your holiday. Be safe.